okay guys good evening everyone and uh, thanks for joining the call so <clears throat> today we are going to start a new series uh, that is on aws we call it as amazon web service so today we are going to start amazon cloud amazon web service so i know many of you were asking me from you know from many uh, months or even year also for more than a year a lot of people have been asking like when i'm going to start uh, you know any of the cloud uh, sessions so so today we have started now and uh, uh, and lot of viewers you know even they have asked me one a very basic question whether we have to go with uh, aws or azure cloud or gcp cloud so in many forums and in many places i have explained it like you can either learn any one cloud perfectly right either you can go learn the aws cloud first or else you can even go with your azure cloud also so microsoft's cloud is an azure cloud right any cloud you can learn guys but make sure that you learn from the very basic to the advanced level any one cloud okay any cloud any one cloud you have to always learn from the very basic to the advanced level so that you will be able to know all the concept of cloud computing so all concept of cloud computing okay uh, all concept of cloud computing you should have a clear cut understanding or clear cut knowledge so it means that actually you are giving the you are giving your complete time for learning a cloud computing concept so better you have to take any one cloud and give the maximum time to that so that you will be able to understand from the very basic level to the advanced level or i can say from end to end you can you have to learn and uh, and also you should have a very good practical knowledge everything once you gain all that knowledge then only you start you can go into the learning to the other cloud okay it uh, so you shouldn't uh, learn parallelly you cannot say that uh, rajesh i will learn aws and azure parallelly so it is very difficult so you will get confused actually so that's the reason i would say that like you can choose any one cloud and learn it uh and also i know that a lot of people have asked me continuously about the azure cloud right when i'm going to start the azure cloud i told initially about that i'm going to start the azure cloud but uh, i see that many other people are also started asking me about the aws cloud because when they are attending interviews right they have been asked a lot of aws cloud concepts so i thought that like let me start with the aws itself and uh, we will try to complete from the very basic to the advanced level and uh, i'll also discuss about what are the course curriculum what are the models which we are covering how many hours we are covering all those timing details and all i will going to share it today itself okay but what we'll do now at this point of time that i have chosen to go with the aws cloud first so let me first go with aws cloud and then i will in between like whenever i'm explaining about aws cloud right i will give the reference to the microsoft azure also so that we will be able to understand the you know, the services like what are some suppose i'm talking about some services in aws suppose assume that i'm talking about the vpc services right so there is a similar service in azure we call as a v vnet service actually so i'm going to tell even the service name also and also i'm going to tell you about some of the features what are the features which are there in amazon cloud or aws cloud and what is the same feature which is there in the azure what is the difference between those two features and which are more compatible which is more you no know, like uh, which are more important or which are more uh, you know better services right i will even discuss about that also in between whenever i am discussing okay so it is always better that you should always learn or you should always even start comparing for one cloud to other cloud because that will make your uh, you no know, learning very faster but still i would uh, recommend you that first try to stick with only one cloud learn in in a very perfect manner and then try to learn with the other cloud actually right suppose assume that guys you have started learning about the ms aws cloud so please make sure that you learn end to end make a very good practice on the cloud right on the cloud platform try to understand all the concepts okay work on some few projects become perfect in that do some certification then you could say that okay you have gained some good tremendous knowledge on to the aws cloud once you have done with that immediately you start jump on the azure cloud immediately it means that you should not waste your time you should immediately start learning about azure and then i would say that actually that uh, the learning pace or when you start learning on azure right it will be very much faster because you will not be slow because you have spent enormous time in learning uh, aws cloud right azure cloud learning will become very easy 
because you already know have a concept of one cloud learning other cloud will really uh, you know uh, it will be very much faster you will not uh, really uh, you know take more time to learn it will be very faster why because that you will start comparing with the aws what you learned or what you practice it's a same in the vice versa when you start learning firstly on azure cloud okay learn everything end to end and then start learning after once you complete then you start learning on aws cloud right so that is all about and a lot of people have some questions like uh, in today's like in today's uh, time like in 2023 okay I, all we know that there are no job opportunities no openings are available we know that that is a hard truth now because from last one year uh, you know uh, the job requirements on both uh, devops and in cloud have you know has been reduced not many you know, like people are actively recruiting not many p companies are actively recruiting but still i would suggest that like be have patience and start learning you don't stop learning right because at uh, soon after some time like maybe in 2024 right mm -hmm. uh, at the very beginning or the first quarter itself mm -hmm. there might be a rise in the requirement in all the sectors actually so it is not only with the uh, uh, with the cloud and DevOps, actually, it is with all the sectors, people who are working on the development side, people who are working on the testing side, people mm -hmm. who are, uh, you know, like uh, working on, you know, data analyst, uh, business uh, analyst, data analyst, mm -hmm. people who are working on AI, ML, anything, artificial mm -hmm. intelligence, every sector has gone down, actually. It's mm -hmm. not like that only one, uh, you know, you know mm -hmm. for only one job opportunity, it has no, it's not like that. Everywhere mm -hmm. it has gone down. So it is a good time. Uh, that we invest our time now in learning something which we don't know, okay, becoming perfect and get ready for a better opportunity in the upcoming months. Correct? So that's all. Okay. So uh, uh, as I said earlier, like a lot of people have some questions that whether I have to learn first Azure or uh, AWS, so you can learn anything. And the second question comes that people might ask, uh, sir, there is a lot of requirement in Microsoft Azure disease. Yes, that is very fact. Uh, that's very true. And that's, uh, it's a fact that requirements are there even in Azure also. A lot of requirements are there, right? Uh, even many of the projects, migration projects, everything is happening in the Azure cloud itself. Many of the startup companies or even uh, some companies which have already been established, even they are migrating to Azure cloud. That's a fact, actually. But still, you, I could see that actually AWS still has more market capture than the Azure actually, okay? And even you will see that right, a lot of job opportunities, even they are there in the AWS also. So guys, any one cloud will always be better, okay? And in your resume, if you put uh, both DevOps and uh, AWS or any cloud, one cloud, right? Definitely there will be a call for you and they would be interested to know about how much knowledge you have onto the particular cloud platform and what kind of a projects you have involved in, what kind of a services you have used in AWS, right? They're going to ask you in a very in-detail manner. So that's the reason only theory or learning concept is not enough in any cloud platform. You should have a hands-on, a complete hands-on you should have. And in our sessions, in our upcoming sessions, or when we started uh, you know, getting into learning on AWS and its services, right? We will be doing both theory and practical. So I would uh, stress on both the things because that unless or until you don't understand a theory, you cannot really understand the practical. Similarly, like if I start, if I uh, start learning only, or if I start doing practically completely, right? You will not be able to understand like what I'm doing, right? I might be very fast in doing something, but you have to catch with me, right? So first I need to tell about the theoretical part, what exactly we are doing and what is the requirement and which is a, that particular service which can provide the solution for me. And then like I'll go with that particular service, explain about that particular service in detail and then starts doing some practical so that you'll be able to understand end to end. So is it clear? Now, because today is the first day of session, I don't want to really get into much into the, you know, like AWS and start explaining about everything. We'll slowly get into it. So you could see that in the first one or two or uh, like one or two or three sessions, you will see like I'm stressing more on the practical, uh, sorry, I'm stressing more on the theoretical plot on the cloud computing. So, so I'm going to discuss something on the cloud computing part first. So cloud computing concepts. So once we understand on the cloud com computing concept, then I will get into the AWS. Okay, and then I will get into the AWS cloud and we'll see, check that how AWS came into the picture. Okay, what exactly AWS provides for the end user and, uh, you know, like uh, how to create an AWS user account and what are the different services. So the discussion is a, it's a huge discussion actually. So we'll be getting into a lot of things in learning on AWS and its services. 
so that's the reason i have even created a, a you know i have a syllabus for that and we are going to discuss on that so we are going to stick to that syllabus and we will go model by model every day every time right suppose if i take first model so i'm going to cover everything in the first model and then we'll go to the second model so i will not go haphazardly so i will share that also to you all so that you can go through the course content and understand like where we are into it and you can even track it what whatever we are doing right that will be everything will be covered as part of our uh, you know syllabus whatever i'll be showing it is it clear guys so now so okay fine sorry let me write to today's date so today is uh, aws day one session and uh, the timing i think we started around uh, 8 uh, 15 if i'm not wrong 8 15 pm ist right so, so guys every day i'm going to make a note of it notes and uh, this note is very important these all kind of a running notes and i will upload in this running notes into one of the shared drive where i will share these notes with you all okay so that you can go through it okay and uh, these sessions as i discussed earlier also these sessions like uh, uh, i'll be discussing when it comes to the course curriculum right i will discuss about uh, the course curriculum and the number of hours what we spend in that and what is the prerequisite everything so that we'll understand that part and then like i will uh, also explain right what would be this course is all about it means that whether this course will be free or it be paid and all i'll be discussing in that section so now as of now what we can do today that we can uh, try to understand a very very uh, basic understanding about what exactly the cloud is all about what is a cloud computing Right, some terminologies, uh, you know, some basic understanding of the cloud and why we came with the cloud now. So we never heard about this cloud computing or the cloud itself like 10, 12 years back. We never heard of it, right? We only started hearing about the cloud compute about the cloud computing. I think from the year 2013 or 2012, we started hearing mm -hmm. about this more. Right. And the first cloud which we heard about is AWS itself, Amazon Web Service Cloud. That is the first cloud which we it came into the market or you no, know, people in the IT world know they started hearing. Right. So we will be discussing those things and all why cloud computing came into the picture and uh, what was the need for it and what was the technology which was used earlier before the cloud computing and uh, what kind of a benefits we are going to get if we get into cloud computing. All those like theoretical concepts we are going to discuss. Maybe if we will not be able to complete today in the next session we are going to you know complete it so there are a lot of you know like cloud computing models are there we have different types of clouds so a lot of concepts are there guys so we are going to cover one by one right so that we will be able to understand everything so my uh, intention is to cover from the very basic level very very basic level and, and we'll start going with the understanding of service, go to the intermediate level up to, and then each and every service, right? I have to end up explaining about even the advanced concept also in that, so that it will be benefit for you all. And also like uh, that will benefit for you for the certification also. Plus it will also benefit for everyone, even for your inter interview also. So during interview, definitely, if you are putting anything on the cloud, right? You say that we have been using cloud. Definitely you might expect a, uh, you might expect a questions on the cloud and that too, those questions might be mostly 90% of those questions might be scenario based questions. It means that they'll give a scenario to you and they'll say that this is one of the customer and this his requirement are so and so. What kind of a best solution you can give? What kind of a services you are using? How you will give the service? How we are going to provide service, right? How we are going to provide the service and uh, what kind of what is the best way to reduce the cost estimation for every client whenever using whenever you are using some particular service? So all those scenario based questions will be asked in every interview, right? So so you need to be get ready to up to that level. It means that you need to have a basic level, up to the advanced level. You should know so that we can even uh, know we can even uh, answer any kind of a scenario based or any kind of a tough question. Whatever been asked, right? We should be able to or we should be in a position to answer it. That is all my intention is to start this course actually. Is it clear guys till here? So we are going to soon start with the course curriculum and everything, but till here, are you, are you okay? Do you have any questions at this point of time? No? Okay. Now, guys, so, uh, let us start learning about the cloud con uh, computing concept. Before that, I don't want to really get into understand about what is cloud computing. Let us understand a very, very basic requirement. Suppose assume that uh, at my home, I have this laptop. 
or else I have a lot of electronics devices, right? Uh, I have a TV at my home or else I have a, a washing machine at my home or I have a micro oven. So a lot of electronics components are there in your, uh, at each and every home, right? We have a lot of electronics component. A lot of electronics components are there. Electronics devices are there at our home. if I take an example, so suppose I have a laptop. This is my, you know, like uh, Lenovo laptop. And you know that running or to make sure that I have to sit on the laptop, I have to work, right? I need a power, right? Each and every laptop, each and every device need a power. So what are you going to do? So you'll say that, Rajesh, uh, I, have a, I have a cable. So that is nothing but uh, my adapter, power adapter, which is powered by the laptop. I need to just plug into the socket. Some electrical board is there at my home. I have to just plug power up. Oh, sorry, I have to just plug in, switch on the button, and I know I'll start getting the power. It means that the laptop will start getting the power, so I can switch on my laptop. Correct? Yes, that's true. That for every electronics device or whatever we do, right? We need a power actually, right? And when you switch on the socket, you know that somehow I'm going to get the power. You are not really worried. So as an end user, we are not really worried about how at our home, the power comes, comes, or we are not really worried about how this power is generated. Guys, do we really worried about this, all these things? We're not really worried because some power connections are given, right, at our home premises. And uh, in every home, right, there will be a meter which will be given uh, by the power supplier. For example, in Karnataka, in Karnataka or in Bangalore, Karnataka, that's great. In Bangalore, we are, uh, the power meters are being given by the government organization, which is called the BESCOM. So what the BESCOM will do that, they will come to a home and uh, they will put down the, lay down the wires and they will take from the main uh, junction and uh, they lay down the wires and uh, the power comes in and they will try to fix a meter for meter at your home. It will be uh, like metered so that, you know, like whatever the power we consume, right? So the meter is going to show that, okay, this much of units of power has been consumed, so and so, and this is the bill. So a kind of a meter is generated, um, sorry, a meter is plugged in, in at your home play, uh, premises and the power comes to your home and through that the power flows at your home and uh, you could see that there are a lot of boards, sockets are there, switches are there, so many you know, different, uh, you, know, uh, 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 you know, electrical components are there through which actually what happened, right? The power comes to a place. So this is a simple analogy, I would say, right? So so now what happened, right? So what I'm trying to tell you that as an end user, I'm not really worried about how the power is generated. The power could be generated by some third party person, right? It could be something like a Reliance Power or Adani Power or any other power, right? They could generate the power and they can, uh, through them, actually, the power comes to every house. So I'm, as an end user, I'm not really worried about that. My worry, my point is that actually, whenever I need a power, I need to just plug in the, my, uh, you know, my plug in the wire to the socket and no switch on it, I should get a power. Right. So, so this is what exactly, this is the same analogy what we are looking into the cloud computing. You will say that Rajesh, I need some kind of a resource, hardware resources. I'm not worried who is giving what. Some I need an as an end user, I need that kind of a resources or I need a service. So who's going to go up provide me? It's a cloud computing platform, or you call it a CSP, cloud service provider. They are going to give you all kind of a resources. CSP, we call it the cloud computing. Cloud service provider, sorry. So cloud service providers so are the uh, you know are the people or uh, those are the, you know, like uh, third party companies, which they provide the hardware resource for the end requirement. So suppose as a user, I say that I need some five servers, I need this much of storage, I need this much of networking, okay, I need this much of router switches. So I need some kind of a hardware resources for my requirement. So without, you know, buying it my own, it's something like same thing. If you take analogy of the power, right? I am not worried about the who is power generating the power. I'm only worried that power should come at my home. So similarly like that, 
you need to have some hardware resources. So who is going to provide it? The cloud service provider is going to provide a resources for your requirements. For end my end requirement might be something, right? For example, as a company, I might be developing an application, or I might be doing some kind of an experiment with developing application. For developing an application, I need a resources. So that resource, instead of owning by my own, right? Instead of owning, investing a lot of uh, money or the capex for getting the hardware. Somebody should be there who should provide me that kind of a service where I can get all those hardware services and that is provided by your cloud service provider. Is it clear? Is it clear, guys? So now, okay, let me, so let me draw the diagram, okay, I think. So let me take some pictures also, guys. So I will take it as a, laptop icon so in our all our upcoming classes right i will be using a lot of uh, you know like uh, icons images so that you know, we all will be able to understand very uh, in a in a nice way we're able to understand anything i can take this one so this is my laptop so this is the laptop where i want you no know, i want to work on it and i need a power right so i need a power so socket uh, power, what is it? Power socket image. Let's see. Yeah, this is something. Yeah, anything. So you know that through this, what happened through this socket? Okay, this laptop is going to get a power so that we can run it, right? And assume that <coughs> as an end user, you're working. Okay, you say that Rajesh, I need some more storage, man. Right? It means that whatever the data I'm storing, right, it is stored in it, but I need some external device also. Oh, you will say that okay, Rajesh, go and think, go to the Amazon. Okay, order some uh, order some uh, external hard drive. So this is something like external hard drive. External hard drive. So connect that external hard drive. Connect to this laptop. And make sure that whatever the data is written, right, that should get copied into this extra hard drive. So you are managing everything, uh, uh, right, actually. So this is something like an online storage, what you have. You can have an extra drive or you can even have an online storage. So there are many companies are there, what happened, right, they will provide you uh, the storage as a service. Where what happened, right, you need not to keep your hardware with you or you need not to buy any kind of a sand storage. You'll get all the storage uh, as an online itself. So you need to, you need, you will get a, all, the, you'll get those services actually. So you need to just procure that service and make use of the services actually. So this is something like an online storage, which you call as a storage as a service as we say, right? So this exactly, this analogy, whatever I'm talking about, this is exactly the same thing what we use in our cloud computing. So for our cloud compute requirement, okay, we will be using as a service actually. We'll be using a service. We are not worried about, right, how those services are managed, who's going to manage the servers, right, how we are going to get the resources, who is going to give the resources? Oh, all those things we are not really worried about. We need some kind of a service so that whenever I am developing any application or whenever for my business use case, I need some kind of resources, I will get all those resources with some of your cloud service provider. Is it clear, guys? Now, coming here, okay? So let me write the notes now. So guys, I have a habit of writing a running note so that you will be able to understand clearly. And this notes, as I said, right, it will be a reference for you. So whenever you watch the videos and you want to refer to the videos, uh, sorry, refer to the notes, right? You can go to this notes and you can start going through it because many of the things, whatever I'll be doing practically, that also I will try to copy paste the whole stuff into the notes itself. So that if suppose somebody want to know what kind of a command I've executed everything, they can refer to the notes and they can go through these notes to understand in a better way. Is it clear? So, and also I will try to even share some of the PDFs and all documents also. So when an electrical appliances, like in our case, it's a laptop, it needs power. It needs power. What we do? So we just plug in, plug it, plug in it into 
some socket, some socket, right? So we know that electricity is always readily available in our home. But this electricity is, uh, how I can say, is generated over uh, over at power stations, right? We know that some third party people will be there or the government itself, they'll try to generate this power. And we know that guys, whenever we are using a power, we know that we always get the bill, right? So we pay the electricity bill. So how much you pay the electricity bill? It depends upon the usage, right? How much we're using, right? How much units we have used, right? Based on the unit, how much we're used, right? We're going to get the electrical bill. It's the same thing like that. Whenever I'm using some of the cloud computing service, okay, what kind of a bill I'm going to get? I'm going to get the bill based on your usage. So we will be discussing all those things, particularly to AWS, right? What kind of services we have? How much is the services? So we know that we have heard the word Nazar, pay as you go. It means that you need to pay the amount, right? Uh, you need to pay the amount or you need to, they're going to charge it based on your usage only. Once you stop using the uh, user, uh, once you stop using any kind of resources, right? Then what happened that AWS will not bill for it. It will stop the billing. At the same moment, at the same second, they'll stop billing. They'll not you know, proceed with the building, billing. But unless until you're making the use of the service or, or, or your service is up and running and you as an end user, you are making use of the service means until that point of time, the billing will be keep going on. Okay. So we pay the bill. We pay the electricity bill. Bill for whatever we have, uh, we have used, we have used because why? Because because electricity is metered, is metered, right? So, if we apply the same analogy to the software information technology, a technology uh, services services. So if you apply the same analogy to the software information technology services, this is what we call, or this is what, this is what cloud exactly does actually. Clear guys? So if we, so whenever you are talking about the cloud, just think about the power, whatever you're getting, right? Because you are paying the money for the unit, what you are using it, same thing, what exactly? What exactly the service provider do? The service provider, so the cloud service provider will provide all kind of a services to you. What kind of a service to you? It provides all kind of service like a hardware services for you, software services for you. A lot of services will be provided. So whenever you start using the services, you will be built actually, right? So you can just understand what exact cloud means. You can just understand as as an analogy with your electricity power, which is provided at your home actually. Clear? Now, guys, so this is all about, okay. Now, <clears throat> see, there is only, uh, there is one very interesting, uh, you know, concept is that behind this actually, you know that when the software uh, technology was evolved, right? Uh, you know, like uh, there are major, or I can say that broadly, there were more, there are, there were four major components were there in the software technology. There are four major, um, I can say, four major components. I can say like that. What are those actually? So first is something like you have a hardware actually. Hardware you can think about something like uh, anything. Like you have a CPU, you have a RAM, RAM, or you have a systems like whatever the hardware you talk about, right? All the system hardware, everything that I'm I'm talking about that as a hardware actually. So you know that the hardware technology came into the picture, right? Where a lot of different devices we came. We came with the switches, router, network devices, storages, uh, you know, network cables, blah, blah. So many hardwares we came, right? That was one of the era where, you know, a lot of 
new hardwares were coming up in the market, right? And the second uh, was something like, uh, uh, I can say it as a system management, actually. System management. System management is something like, guys, you can think about something like uh, data centers. You know about the data centers, right? Free organization, they have their own data centers or we call them on-premise data centers. So they maintain everything in, you know, in a sing in a building actually where uh, they will try to get all kind of uh, requirements for you to run the hardware right you need a power you need a cooling system you need a racks actually and you need many other devices to run it right so you are actually uh, you know fixing all these things in you know in a building or in a, in a container where uh, you know like you will be able to run your all your servers right so that is we call the system management or nothing but the data centers actually so this was also one of the you know one of the components in the software technology that we most of the companies right when they the companies were you know started up they started having their own data centers locally in their own buildings itself actually right and the very important third important is that actually we came up with something of the internet technology right so you know that when the internet technology came to the picture where we started using all kind of uh, uh, all kind of uh, things in into our web actually right so we came with a lot of lot of web technologies, right? For example, we came with a lot of SOA, Web2 technology, Auth2, right? Many of the web-based technologies, we came with, it makes our end, entire life easy, right? So the end user or the customer, right? He can access any application through just a browser, actually. And we know that our machines or every device is connected over the internet. So we will be able to, uh, you know, get any kind of information through just a click in the browser. So how this all happened with the help of a web technology. So websites were developed, websites were developed, right? Uh, we came with uh, the client and server architecture and so many other things came into the picture into this mm -hmm. internet technology, right? So we know that this internet technology was an era where like a lot of, you know, like a uh, mm, uh, mm -hmm. lot of things came into the market, right? Like a lot of web applications came to the market, right? And, uh, you know, like it was a really... Uh, uh, like uh, instead of accessing directly in server, right? We will be able to access remotely through the web itself. So that kind of an era also we have been seeing. Right? And today also still we are using the internet technology because everything depends. Whatever we, uh, you know, whatever we deploy or whatever uh, we come up with the application, it has to run into the web itself, actually, right? Through the web itself, actually, we should be able to access that application. So that was this is the fourth component, third component, sorry. And the fourth component is something like. Uh, uh, I would say that it's uh, distributed systems or distributed technology, or you can say distributed computing. You can say. And uh, you might have heard about some concept, something like a grid technology, grid computing, or else uh, uh, we might have heard about something like a clustering, uh, right? So many, you know, like terminologies we might have heard about this. So it all comes under your distributed computing. So these are the mere major four components i can say that which you know like which has come and you could see that people around in the software technology right they might have worked in this different different areas right suppose some people have purely worked on hardware level right a lot of system admins are there you could see that you no know, they have worked in, in the data centers they uh, they have set up the data centers you know like they have did a lot of uh, uh, you know, like uh, hardware setup, everything they have wired up, uh, right? Because there are so many uh, different networking components also available, like switch or routers or some kind of a storage, right? They have did all kind of uh, uh, connections between them and they have set up the whole, uh, you know, hardware rack setup, everything they have did it. So they know bits and pieces, everything about the hardware, right? So as a system admin, they are very good with that work actually. You know, they might not be very good at programming part or they might not be good at the application level, but in the hardware level, they were good. Similarly, like that, a lot of people were there who are working purely on the system management, that is on data centers, which I talked about, right? Some people are there who have worked on the internet technology a lot. Some people have worked on the distributed computing a lot, again, like grid computing or else set up in the clustering environment, right? Setting up a, some kind of a middleware, uh, uh, you know, inventory software. So you would find a different, different combination of the people who have worked in this different, different areas, actually. Right now, why I told you uh, uh, all these things because, guys, like when it comes to the cloud computing, once we are working on the cloud computer, right, we are going to uh, hit all these four major components whenever we are learning about the cloud. So, whenever you want to learn the cloud, 
as a cloud engineer, right, I should have some little understanding or knowledge on the hardware, not in depth, but a very, very uh, basic uh, hardware knowledge is required for me. So when I am working into the cloud, right, I should have even have a knowledge on the data centers or into the system management. I should have a knowledge on internet technology, what kind of internet technology is provided to you, right? And distributed cloud computing. Suppose you want to set up the clustered environment or grid computing or else a, a disaster recovery system you want to set up, right? Business continuity, we call it BCSR, uh, business continuity and uh, disaster recovery. Uh, systems right so you need to have a knowledge on even the distributed computing so this cloud right it touches almost all these areas so whatever the goodness you will find in all these four components right mm -hmm. the cloud computing will make use of the the best uh, like i can say the best uh, features whatever it is provided by all these four major components is it clear now if i talk about this like in in a picture representation like this actually suppose like i can say that uh, assume that like i have the circle okay i have the circle okay so so all these four circles they have to okay They have to interact with each other. And yes, these are four circles, guys. These are four circles. And Okay. Oh, sorry. I think. Uh... So this is what to the cloud. So it comes in between here. So this is nothing but your cloud. Okay. So here. Uh, this circle I can call it as something like a hardware. Right. And uh, you could have heard of many other terminologies, like for example, you might have heard about the virtualization, or else you have something like a, a multi core, uh, right? All our, you could see that we have uh, nowadays all the laptops which we are getting, right? It's all multi core, right? Like for example, Intel, Pent, uh, Intel's Pentium 5, Pentium 7, Pentium 3, all these are multi-core chips actually, multi-core CPUs actually. So these are the kind of a, like technology what we have in the hardware today, right? Similarly, what happened, right? We, are, we have something like internet technology. <clears throat> internet technology. And here we have the technology, like SOS, Web 2.0, and many other technologies, right? And uh, this is something you can call the system management, right? In the under system management, you could see that you will come across with something like data centers. And even we do a lot of uh, you know, automation into the data centers, right? Data center automations. And this one is nothing but your distributed computing. Okay, and uh, here <clears throat> you have something like a grid computing. <laughs> what else? You have some uh, grid computing utilities, utility, you have something like clustering, right? So this all <clears throat> things, BC is not but business control, disaster recovery, PCDR, right? So you could see that, <laughs> Whenever you're working on a cloud or whenever you want to become cloud engineer, right? You should have a knowledge on all these four areas, guys. If you're having a, a knowledge on a, all these four areas, then you could say that, okay, you you are a, a good uh, you know, like 
cloud engineer right you should have without like without the knowledge of this four right you cannot become a very good cloud uh, engineer actually so even though if you if you're not aware of the internet technology or whatever still you need to learn you need to at least have a basic understanding or knowledge similarly with the hardware also because you will deal with a uh, lot of hardware requirements and everything right whenever you come up with a design or whenever you are uh, coming up for giving any kind of a solution to any customer right you should even have a knowledge on the hardware similarly with the data centers and the automation right maybe like you might, you will be involved in doing some kind of a migration activity where you will you will involve in uh, you know like coming up with uh, your uh, the complete design architect of how you are going to do a migration right what kind of requirements are there what is there in the client end and while uh, migrating to the cloud environment right how you can uh, migrate it what kind of resources you need to have in a cloud environment all those things <laughs> you should be able to manage or you should be able to have an architectural diagram with you actually so that's the reason you should even have a very good knowledge on system management similarly with your distributed computing system so here what happened the cloud always make use of the best out of all these four technologies it always make use of best actually so that's what in today's era if anybody learns about the cloud it means that he has gained a knowledge in all these different four technologies actually so that's the reason guys actually that whenever you're learning a cloud actually you should have some basic uh, prerequisite is required that you should have a knowledge on the hardware you should have a knowledge on the internet technology you should have a knowledge on the system management as well as on the distributed room if you don't have it learn it but at least you should have a basic understanding is it clear till here any doubts guys are you finding interesting okay well so guys now to understand in a better way okay to understand in a better way what i can do at this point of time that we can have or we can do or we can come with some kind of an experiments actually experiment or we can come with some kind of a requirement so how i can learn or how i can understand still more better way right so what we can do is that i can start with we are going to start a new project or something like a airline reservation So just to make you understand, guys, we are experimenting everything. So I need to learn or need to understand the cloud, right? So for that, what I will do that just we will try to understand. Like suppose, for example, we are going to start with a new project, something like for example, like airline project, right? What kind of a requirements you need to have for your for you to work or for you to come up with this airline reservation project? Actually, so what you will say? sir you say that uh, sir we need some server sir okay fine so because you are developing an application you are you or else you have an application means to host the application we need some kind of a resources that is not but the hardware resources so i need some kind of a servers actually okay and uh, and what are those requirements are there so let us come up with the requirements now. okay so you will say that sir uh, we are having various different clients are there like for example uh, i am having something like a client uh, who is sitting in his laptop or in his system so he want to access the airan is so he will basically go with the website our website and through that he is going to access our application so so this person is sitting in the laptop in his device and he is accessing our air like <coughs> online airline reservation application okay this is one client so these are some end clients which i am telling you now so apart from this can you have your application to be executed or run by some kind of a mobile app yeah you will have some mobile app so you know that nowadays you can access any application through your mobile also you know to just install that app and you can start using it right similarly you i will be having some third party vendor also some person is there right third party person vendor or uh, you can call it a third party third party uh apps right or vendors are there right 
as well as you know that uh, you know to do bo to book a air ticket right you can even go to the local counter also in uh, if you go to international airports you know you will see that outside a lot of local counters are there so you will have some clients who are who are nothing but your local counters so these are nothing but these are from the client side as an end user you can connect to your application right through any kind of a way either you can go with them or mobile or web or go through a local laptop or else through some local vendor sorry local counter or else to vendor actually fine and now what happened right here what happened you have one more component here uh, in between something uh, this component is something like you have a gateway actually gateway component we have a gateway or we can call it as a uh, web server or the gateway right and now after that guys you have an you have a you are developing or you have a, a airline reservation application right usually what kind of different components you'll find in, in that application so guys i'm not going with a very in detail i'm just explaining a very high level suppose for example you will say that rajesh you have something like a uh, hmm, how i can say uh, you have something like a availability checker so availability checker this is the part of the application where you know like it will check whether the ticket is available or not availability checker right so this is one components of your application what are the other components like for example you have a um, after the availability checker what else you have guys uh, you have something like a uh, how i can say booking server yes right and other important components what else you have something like you have a database right database is a very important right component where all your data application data are are stored in your database right and you will have one more components which we call it as a uh, ticket generator right once your ticket is confirmed or uh, uh, it is confirmed right it has to generate the ticket also right or it calls the invoice actually right ticket generator so you'll see that in my online airline app application so this is nothing but your online airline reservation application reservation app or application right oh now guys what will happen now so this is my this is not about the client side and this is not about the from the application end these are the components i have right so now what you will say that sir all these clients whatever the client you have right these clients will actually these clients will actually send a request to this gateway actually they'll send this request to this gateway so this is a point where the gateway will accept all kind of a connection request actually so whenever any kind of a end client he want to book a ticket airline ticket he sends a request and what happened the request comes to the gateway it has to hit to the gateway so you could say that sir the entry point of my application is through gateway through gateway only the traffic should come in okay good once the traffic comes in what happened guys what will happen so once the traffic comes in what the from the gateway what happened right the request or it will the request will go to the availability checker what the availability checker will do it will go to check whether the ticket is available or not if the ticket is available what happened right it sends a request to your booking server so what the what the booking server will do booking server is going to book the ticket and whatever the after the booking whatever the data is there right all those data will be stored the booking data will be stored in your database once the data is stored in the database what happens that actually right the booking server is going to call your ticket generator uh, service and the ticket generator service what will do it will try to take the data from the database and find it what happened right it's and through the data through the database it checks the data or it takes the data and the ticket and what finally it will do that the ticket generator is going to generate the ticket it's going to generate the ticket or it's going to generate the invoice of the ticket whatever it is invoice or whatever correct this is how the process happens right guys this is what it happens so 
So now the point here is that, okay, so this is nothing but your sample architecture. This is what I have, I uh, my airline resolution application, right? A simple basic architecture you have. <clears throat> now the question comes that, uh, sir, like uh, how many uh, servers I need? A bare minimum. How many servers you need, guys? How much? Can you tell me, any one of you? How much servers I need for setting up this or everything? Forget about the client end and the server side or the applicant side. Right? How many servers you need? You will say there are uh, one, two, three, four, and even five. Five, yeah, five uh, the gateway also considered the device only. Right? So you will say that, sir, I barely, may, bare minimum, I need some five servers. So number of servers required to run this architecture at a bare minimum are five servers. One, two, three, four, five. Correct? So you have a sample architecture now. Okay. So number of servers required to run this architecture at a bare minimum are five. So what are those five? You know that Availability checker. For for that, you have one separate server. Booking server. What else you have, guys? Mm, ticket generator, obviously. Ticket generator. And the fourth is nothing but your database. And the fifth is nothing but your gateway. Correct? So now, okay, this is all fine. This is good that, okay, with the five servers, I'm able to set up the whole, uh, the whole stuff and uh, I'm able to do the business. Fine, good. Now assume that suddenly someday what happened, right? Or sometime what happened, right? The database get crashed or it get it goes down actually. What you are going to do? So guys, you can even unmute and uh, you know you can even uh, you can you can even give your answers, right? So you know that if the database goes down, right? You uh, you can even say that your your whole application will stop working. Because what happened, right? Availability checker or the booking server, ticket generator, all are dependent upon the database because they're going to look in a database and they're going to work. Or whenever they're going to translate any kind of a data, they need to have a database actually. Database is always required. So the database is required or required, right? Always you should make sure that the availability of the database should be very much high. So I'm using some terminologies, like for example, high availability, fault tolerance, right? So this kind of a terminology I'm using now. So we will come across with all these terminologies later. Okay. But what will happen? What you are going to do if the database crashes? So if you say that sir, the, if the database crashed, uh, it means that my whole application is down. Right. Obviously, your whole application will be down. So what you will do? You will do the, you will say, sir, uh, if the database is down, let me do one thing. So let me have one uh, secondary uh, or I can call it as a backup or the secondary, whatever you say. Uh, you will say that, sir, I will have one. Uh, one more replica. Yeah, one more replica or one more server, whatever you say. Yes. Correct. Right. Uh, you will say, sir, I will have one more replica, sir, which we call as a uh, secondary database. Actually. So good. We have some secondary database. Don't worry, guys. I'm just explaining you uh, something. Uh, we'll slowly come into why I'm explaining this. So now what happened, right? Whatever the data, guys, which is uh, written into this main database, all this data sync will happen even to the secondary database also. So it means that what are the data which this application writes into the database? Right? At the same instance, the replica of the same data or the same copy of the data will be also be written into the secondary database also, which you are maintaining it. So why you are maintaining it? To make sure that actually 
always my application is up and running. The availability of the application is up and always up and running because that, for instance, for some case, what happened if the database get crashed actually, okay, still what happened, your application will be still working because it will try to connect to a second database and it can get the all the data whatever it needs for it. So that you will not lose the business or else know that your application will be always up and running. So these are very, very basic uh, like uh, stuff in which we always do that. We'll always keep one kind of a backup of that same server actually or the replication of the same server, right? So usually even every organization, even in, in today also, even your organization or in my organization also, same thing is happening that we are keeping a backup of that actually. So what I would say that to resolve this, actually we add one more secondary database which has a data sync with the primary database. So this is a primary database and this is a secondary database. So now we say that if the secondary database, if it fails, still we run the application with the help of the secondary database. So secondary database will act like a, it act like a recovery. It means that, so once what happened, once the, the primary database goes down, the secondary database will become an active database and it starts serving the service, right? Meantime, what happened, whoever our database administrators are there, they'll get to know that, okay, the main primary database has gone down. So they'll go it and they'll try to lo log in, troubleshoot the issues and make sure that they'll bring back the database up, right? So like that, always we'll have one more, uh, like one more server for maintaining the high availability. So let me write the notes now. So now the question come, what will happen or what will you do if the database crashes? The first important is that if the if the database is crashed, the whole application is down, will be down. To resolve this issue, to resolve this, we will add a secondary database server, secondary database, I can say, which has data in sync with primary database. Okay, now, even if primary database or you can say DB fails, we can still run the show with the secondary DB. Correct? So guys, now, okay. Now, one more very important question is that actually, guys, all these servers are there fine, but where you will have all these servers? Are we going to keep all the servers at our home premises? No, right? So usually what happened, every company, they maintain their own local uh, data center or the place where they maintain all the servers, which we call the data centers actually, right? So what happened, right? So usually what happened, all these servers, are physically located in on-premises data centers, which is locally within the company or within the organization premises. But Fine. This is all fine. You will, okay, this is all fine, right? Now you will say that, sir, uh, uh, what will happen if my data center will be, has caught fire? Assume the whole building has caught fire. Some, uh, no, we shouldn't actually, you know, discuss or think about it, but assume that I'm saying, I'm saying that actually, that some fire caught happened and, uh, you know, like uh, the whole servers were burnt. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? 
you will say, sir, my whole application went down, sir. Because if the file itself is caught, where is a database? All that primary, secondary database, all these applications, all the servers are burnt. All I have lost all data. The whole, uh, you know, like the whole application is down now. So what you can think about it? What you can do? Uh, okay, sir, we think about that, sir. Can we have a replica about the same architecture in some other site? Assume that uh, this entire architecture, it is there in Bangalore now. This whole server setup, everything in Bangalore. You'll say, sir, can I have this whole server setup, everything in one more site, which is not one Hyderabad? Yes, we can keep that. Right. So this is something like, guys. Yes. Yes, correct. This is something like, uh, this is something like a site one. I can call. This is site one. It is nothing but it's in Bangalore. Right. You will say that, sir, I will have one more site, sir. I will have one more. Uh, what I can do? Uh, one second. Okay. I'll have one more site like this. Okay. This is nothing but a site two. Which is in Hyderabad. Correct. So it means that if the whole site goes down due to some uh, due to some kind of a disaster, right? Like fire is caught or flood due to some flood or due to some reason, if the whole site goes down, right? The site two that is in Hyderabad, so it becomes an active. So all these customers are client right? who are uh, making the application, they'll get the they will get they will not see that the application has gone down. So the whole the business continuity will happen, right? You cannot say to the customer that no, I have one side where you know I have I had all the servers, but due to some uh, disaster, right? What happened? The whole server went down. That's the reason, you know, that application has gone down. So we are not able to give the service. You cannot tell like that to the end customer, right? And he might be some end customer might be doing some big, uh, no, some uh, some bigger uh, like uh, he might be doing some bigger transaction. He might be doing a lot of booking. So you cannot tell like that. So always, uh, guys, whenever you are into the business, you should make sure that for the end user or the customer, right, the availability of your application should be very high. That is what your requirement. For that reason, what happened, right, you have come up with your disaster recovery plan. This is a very costly affair. Why? Because, right, you have a multiple sites here. Site 1 is Bangalore. Site 2 is Bangalore. For the site 2 also, you should procure or you should have your own building. You should set up the data center. You should have all the servers. You should have all the connectivity. Plus, you need to have a connectivity between from the site 1 to site 2, right? There has to be a network connectivity between them. So, it is a very, very costly affair. So, it is a, it is always a, we call it as a, a rich man service. So whoever is rich, right? Whichever company is rich, right? They'll always will be able to go with the you know uh, disaster recovery solution by setting up the multiple uh, you know multiple data centers across the regions or across the sites actually, right? So a poor man, a person who is very poor, I mean they cannot invest so much money. They cannot go with this you know with this uh, disaster recovery system because it it it's all depend upon your capex. Like you need to invest a lot of money for setting the whole thing. So, so guys, what happened, right? For, for this requirement, right? You have to come up with your uh, disaster recovery plan, right? We need to have a data centers into two multiple locations for our enterprise applications, right? It needs a lot of requirements. It needs people. It may, it needs, uh, you know, like human resources to make sure that, you no know, both the sites are up and running. You need a lot of engineers to take care of this uh, data center. So it is very, very costly effect, uh, affair actually, right? And a lot of pros and cons are there. So we will discuss that. Like, let me write down those things, right? Okay. So usually all this servers, okay, fine. So now, so the question comes, what will happen if your data center has caught fire? What will do? So you will say that Rajesh will have a will have a uh, will have a disaster recovery plan. So so this is what will happen. This is but this is a disaster only, right? 
This is disaster only. And we need, we need to have disaster recovery plan for this. So let's go with two data centers, basically. In two locations for our enterprise application. Right, definitely we'll go with this plan. But so what are the pros and cons? What are the pros and cons for this? Pros. You will say that, uh, sir, it is very effective. Very effective for disasters. Definitely. Right? Because you are providing a service to the end customer. So if that happens, right? So there will not be any kind of a breakage of your service. So you can continue to give the service to the end customer. So that is very good. But what is the pros or what is the cons? Sorry? What are the cons? Cons is something like it's very costly, right? It's very costly. This service is very costly. And it requires a, uh, a decent uh, connectivity between two sites. <clears throat> right. So what is a, this is a rich man solution. Okay, always a big companies, giant companies, they go with the disaster recovery, but some poor, poor man solution, a person who is uh, running the application, but he cannot have uh, in a separate, uh, you know, like, uh, data set to be set up as a site he cannot then what he's going to do what he's going to do so that person whoever is doing right what he will do right he will go with something like a, for example if this is a particular site in bangalore right which you're having a setup and a lot of booking is going on okay a lot of tickets are getting generated so what they will do right they will try to uh they will try to Store a backup actually. Store a backup of all the data. Okay. Maybe if not in Bangalore, at least what they will do, no, they will have a separate storage in Hyderabad, right? And then store all the data, all the data, the whole upbringing data, let it be database or let it be uh, whatever the data is generated by the ticket collector, whatever the data you have, right? All those data are stored as a backup. So in Hyderabad location. This is something like we call a poor man solution. Only the data he has. He doesn't really have this whole setup base. He'll have only one, he'll only take a backup of this data, whatever it's there. So what will do a poor man? Sir? So he'll say that, so we'll only go with storing the backup in only, in only one side. That's all. One side means, in, sorry, in the other side. In the other side, let us, uh, let us not have the complete uh, set actually. Right, we'll only store the, only the data. That is what we call as a poor man solution. So, if we are not going the disaster recovery, then what we'll do? We'll say that we will only go with storing the backup of backup of all the data in other site. So, in our example, it is Hyderabad, where. We are going to only store or only keep all the data. So what are the pros and cons for this approach? So the pros is that actually it is very easy to implement. So just keeping a copy of the data is not that difficult. It is very easy to implement. And uh, what is the cons actually? Suppose in case, what could be the cons case? Can anyone tell me? Suppose in case if this, because we have only one site at Bangalore, but we are keeping a backup of data in the other site, right? Assume that during, the, uh, during, the, during some kind of a disaster in the Bangalore region, this whole service goes down. So what happened, right? This approach will take a lot of time to bring back all the applications because that applicant servers, because that once this goes down, right? You need to again have a setup of one more servers, the same set of servers. Okay, take all those data, data, whatever you have been, you know, taking a backup, restore the data, again, give the business to the customer. But this needs a lot of time, actually. Right, and it is not really recommended or, I mean, okay, I mean, we can go with this also, but still what happened, you will see that there will be a business loss, right? 
So it means that the customer has to wait till all the, the entire setup or the entire servers are recovered back actually. So in case of a cons, what we say that, sorry, in a cons in case of uh, uh, disastrous, this approach will take a lot of time to bring back the application online. There is no proper uh, data sync. No, I mean, data sync is like, uh, I mean, see, during the disasters, you might have lost some data. You might have lost some data, right? But majority of data, whatever you're doing, you know, that data are still backed up, actually. Only some few data might have been lost during disaster. But that is fine. You can still recover that. You can still back up and you can uh, you know, readily give back online to your customers or the clients. But what happened? There will be delay in that, actually. There will be some amount of delay because you need to set up the whole servers. You need to restore back these data and again, give the business to the end customers. Right? You need to ask some time from each and every client saying that, okay, you need to wait for some more time until we record. But in today's world, right, we cannot, you know, we cannot really do like that, right? You have to always give the continuity to business 24 hours, 7, 36 by days. You know, every second, every minute, whatever the service you're giving to the end customer, it should be available for you. You cannot say that actually my business or the, my application be down for, for so and so hours. No. So this is one part. Okay, fine. But you might ask uh, Rajesh, fine. Uh, this is all setup is there. You would see that actually you have a database and you want to have a second database. Fine. You might even uh, try to have more number of uh, uh, database servers based on your requirements. Right. Suppose assume that actually in today you might have some 10 customers who are using this application. Tomorrow, 1,000 applications, 1,000 uh, users will come. After some time, lakhs of users will come who want to access this application, online uh, air, airline reservation, right? So it means that your uh, customer are growing actually. If the customers are growing, is it sufficient that you should have, you can have only one server? You can have only one server of application checking or booking servers or ticket entry, right? You cannot have only one server because a lot of load will come into this, right? Mm -hmm. When you are having a lot of connection is happening or a lot of connection is coming in, right? So it means that as and when your customers are growing, right? You should even scale up this servers. That is something like a different things which we are going to discuss later, not uh, not this time. But what I'm saying that you should always think about even that if your application usage rapidly grows, right? What you're going to take a step actually for them. Right. So we have come across with a lot of terms like auto scaling and all right. So those are the things actually, but we will discuss in detail later, not now, but we need to have even this question also in your mind that what will happen if the users to your application grows rapidly. Right. And even during some uh, holiday season or festival season, right? The the number of users will grow tremendously. So at that case, what you're what is a what kind of a plan you're going to come up so that actually, right? You need to serve all the service to the customers, right? So in that case, what happened? That you need to increase your all your servers also. It means that you need to increase it. So you need to imply or you need to provide some kind of a auto scaling also so that what happened based on the load or based on the customers, right? So automatically what happened, this server's instance should get increased. And whenever that if we, and whenever the traffic flow, or the traffic is very less, or sorry, the n number of connections are, uh, connection with end users are very less, right? At that time what happened, right? Auto scale down should happen. So that you should come back to some minimal server where it can provide some service to some minimal uh, connections, right? So all those designs, activity, everything you have to come up with. Later, not now, I'm just saying. So guys, so so this is a very, very costly affair. It means that every organization or the companies, right, whenever they want to run this application, you could see that they need to maintain a lot of servers. They need to have an internet connectivity, uh, internet connections they should have. And also they should have a replica of one side to other side, right? Because to manage the disaster recovery systems, right? 
so these are all lot of pain points which every like uh, you know the companies uh, went through it actually so the one one stop solution for all these things is not but your cloud computing service okay so now what we are going to do i am not going to continue further here i'll stop it today here itself but before going it what we are going to do now that we are going to uh, go through a syllabus now i will continue from here itself guys tomorrow okay don't worry so here from here onwards we will continue like why cloud cloud computing came into the picture right why you have to know everyone what is now uh, what is the future future is not but cloud itself right everyone are moving to the cloud and what kind of advantage uh, the cloud provides for you mm -hmm. right all those things we have to discuss and we need to discuss about different uh, cloud mm -hmm. computing platforms uh, uh, different cloud service providers like that mm -hmm. we have to discuss but what i would rather say now like i will continue the discussion tomorrow but what we'll do we will try to uh, see what kind of a what is our course content actually because a lot of people have asked me this so that's the reason <clears throat> so guys this is our course content okay so this is our course content so basically uh, it is a 80 hours course content right and uh, uh, it could it would really nearly go for 3 months so what i'm planning for this course is that actually from monday to friday monday to friday every day almost uh, every day like not on weekends sorry week uh, weekdays only monday to friday every day like from 6 pm evening to 7:30 pm like we'll keep only one for one and a half hour class not more than for that not more than that because if i make it a very lengthy videos right people usually people uh, have even seen people start saying that sir your videos are too lengthy we cannot sit for two hours three hours it is very uh, difficult so i have stick that okay let us have only one one and a half hour sessions or slightly more than one and a half hour we'll have each day one session so that i'm going to upload these sessions every day right into the channel as well as i will provide this uh, videos to you also and uh, guys one more very important that this will not be free sessions this will be paid sessions it means that what i'm going to do that the first uh, 20 videos we will i will post it in the channel itself i will upload in the channel and the remaining videos right i'm going to make it as a paid one the remaining videos will make it for as a paid as paid so what is it paid and all uh, we will discuss later how much we have to pay for that and all i will uh, discuss that after some time not now really uh, so i have not really come with uh, what could be the cost of this but uh, what i am planning as i said earlier right i am planning to make this course from the very basic level to the advanced level so that people who don't have any knowledge on the cloud right they can learn the cloud everything from the very basic scratch to the advanced level and uh, here guys i have said about something like 80 hours uh, definitely it'll go more than 80 hours right <clears throat> if i am if i am even taking uh, for your uh, projects and all right suppose uh, this whole course right in this entire course in, at the end of the course actually or in between suppose in that um i have i have covered some few services very important services some six services have had, have completed in aws so i will plan to deliver one project at least in between also it means that maybe after 10 or 15 sessions when i have covered or after 20 sessions if i cover two to three services very important service i'll think about to come up with one small projects right where you can start using uh, all the services in your project execution so if you do a project right then you will get to know about the usage of this whole services right so like that way guys what i will do that i will have some n number of projects actually in, sorry, I'll have some some seven to eight projects I will try to deliver during this entire course. Seven to eight projects we'll do so that we will will be able to understand uh, you know, the complete AWS in a very effective way. And one more thing, guys, uh, people have a notion that, sir, I will do only one project uh, or I will do some one or two projects. Is it fine for us? It depends, guys. It depends upon the it depends upon uh, like the customer requirements. Like, for example, some customers, right? Uh, uh, say for example I'm just telling you in a very high level right so there will be some customers right this is your cloud actually suppose it's the AWS cloud actually so you know that some customers will mm -hmm. come something like uh, Netflix he will come like Netflix is one of the customers so he has his own requirements actually 
So when he comes with, say that, please provide a cloud solution for me or else make sure that, please make sure that all my Netflix application, which is there in my on-prem, right? Uh, try to make sure that everything is migrated to the cloud. Then what kind of a service you're going to provide to the Netflix customer? The service will be completely different. The service will be completely different. Similarly, suppose you have a project, uh, sorry, suppose you have one more client, different, one more client, um, which is about the Ola or Uber, whatever you take, right? Uber, you could take. He will come and he'll also tell the same story that uh, uh, I have all my application which is running on-prem. Mm -hmm. I need to migrate or I need to have the same application running in my cloud or in, in the cloud and particularly on AWS cloud. Then the same cloud service provider or your company, he should be able to give the solution to the Uber client, right? So these two projects uh, are completely different. Do you agree with me, guys? Here what happened that, as you know, Netflix is something like a, it is a, it's a streaming application, right? It means that whenever you want to watch any videos lively or whenever you want to watch any movie or whenever you want to watch any live uh, things which is happening, right? You will prefer to go with the Netflix. So Netflix should be, they should be fast in streaming the data, right? And you know that all this happens, everything with the help of a storage actually. So the store, so all those data are maintained storage. So here what happened as you are a cloud service provider or else you are a, you are a company who is providing all the solution to your Netflix customer, right? You need to make sure that you need to emphasize more on the storage for them. Similarly, Uber might be doing a lot of transaction activity because a lot of end customers will connect to the Uber and they'll try to book the cab service or whatever other services are there, right? So here what happened, right? You need to make sure that the connections, what are the connections happening? All the all the connections should, uh, after whatever the connection which is coming from the client, right? it should well connect to the servers. It means that you need to provide the complete, you need to provide a very uh, faster uh, working and low with low intent with low latency right so this kind of a this is something like a different service which you need to provide all together for your uber application or for your uber uh, customer so these two projects are completely different project guys you cannot say that uh, sir i will try to learn only one project uh, then it means that i have learned the uh, I've learned the cloud. No, it is not like that, guys. You need to work on a different, different uh, requirements for the different end customers so that you will be able to understand or you, you will be able to understand how that particular best service I can make use of for that particular customer. In this case here, you're using storage. For this Uber, you might use some other service, right? For doing that, right? Or else you can even use some kind of a, like security services, right? You will be using some kind of a... Uh, firewall services, security groups. There are so many things out there which you have to come up with the Uber when you're providing the... So what I'm trying to tell that, you need to provide, you need to work on some N number of projects. It's not one or two, some N number of projects you need to work so that you should get, you will get a complete grip on, or you'll get, you'll be able to understand completely onto that particular cloud, right? So what I'm trying to, so what I will be doing that, I will be covering here as part of the entire course, we have to cover up to seven to eight projects so that I'm, I will be able to amply cover all the services, whatever we have, so that you will be understanding about each and every service and you will be able to know that, uh, you will be able to understand a better way that where you need to emphasize for which particular service for the particular customer requirement. So you'll be able to better understand. That's the reason I would say that you will also stress more on the project exception also. So this as and when I will be covering some topics, right? I will get to know, okay, at this point of time, I need to start or I need to execute some project, right? Then and there I will do it. It's not like that the whole course I'm going to, uh, you know, like the whole course get get, get completed at the end, I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to execute. No, it's not like that. In between also, I'll be showcasing some projects actually. You can consider it as something like a mini project, small, small projects. At the end, we are going to use all the services and we'll execute one major project like that. Correct? So now, so coming back to here, guys. So I think we are already going up. Right. This is what uh, the time, uh, the course duration, uh, the number of hours, what we'll be covering. It'll go, go up to 80 hours, but more than 80 hours it'll go. Right. If I start uh, working on all the projects, everything, right. Even helping you, uh, even also discussing on the AWS certification, it will really go a lot. But I have just thought that, okay, 80 hours will be an ample time where we're going to cover all from the basic to the advanced level. We'll be able to cover. That's what I have come up with this hours, number of hours. But it will go more than that, that actually. 80 hours will go more than that. Certifications and all, guys, I will cover in the next class, actually. So next class, we are going to cover all these things.
Okay. So now the whole entire course uh, curriculum, guys, I have actually uh, divided across with some 18 models, not 18, 21 models. I have come up with the 21 models where we'll be covering the almost all major services in your AWS cloud, right? There are a lot of services are there. AWS cloud services are there. You will see that there are more than like uh, 300 plus services are there. We will not be covering all the 300 services. It's very difficult. Only the major services which are actively used in the industry, right? Only those services only we are going to cover. So all the services are all, all are part of this complete 21 model set. So if you come over here, so we have started with the introduction to the cloud computing. So what is the AWS and Azure cloud computing is all about? We'll be discussing in the upcoming classes. Difference between on-prem and the cloud architecture, understanding AWS regions and availability zones, and you know, understanding about the shared infrastructure isolation in AWS cloud. This and all will be part of the first model. Secondly, the second model we will start. What we're going to do with the second model, we're going to start with very important, one of the very important services of the EC2 instances or EC2. Elastic cloud compute. This is one of the very important service which we are going to start, right? Whenever you want to learn, we can start from learning from the EC2 instance. So where I'll be explaining about how to create an EC2 instance. Suppose whenever you want, whenever an end user want any VM to be created, virtual machines to be created, right? So he can use a service by name EC2, right? And after creating EC2 instance, suppose you want to deploy some application or you want to deploy some kind of a software, how to do that, everything will be we will be understanding all through that through in this model actually this model itself guys we will take around seven to eight sessions where we'll be covering from the very basic to the very high level okay so all these models guys if you take any model right you could see that i will be covering some ample number of sessions maybe like five to six sessions in each and every model i will be covering so guys you can just go through this all these things whatever i have mentioned over here ec2 template or launch template spot instance resolution these are the type of instances which will be covering and EBS, elastic block storage, instance stores, understanding of AWS snapshot, very important, performing EBS backup using snapshot and lifecycle manager. These are all very, very important things which will even be asked in interviews. So after this, what happened guys, for every section, once I complete every section, I'll have one session of one or one and a half hour where I'll be discussing about only entry question answers particular to that topic. So that we are aware about what kind of a questions being asked in interview. From a very basic level to the scenario based question, I am going to cover in each and every model. I will not go without discussing those question answers. Okay, I'll not go with the other models. Second is done by S3, is not but the storage. These are the topics, guys, which we'll be covering. I'll not go very in detail as of now, like just go through it. What I'll do, right, I will try to, uh, you know, like uh, uh, give a a link where you can download this entire course syllabus. Okay. So in the description of the video, when I upload into the channel, right, YouTube channel, I'm going to even give you this copy of this course content also. So model three is all about your uh, storages and different types of storages. Okay. Which we call the S3 service. We call it a simple storage service. Okay. The fourth is not but the IM identity and access management. Very, very important guys. This is what one of the heart of your uh, uh, you know, uh, cloud computing, uh, AWS cloud computing, because majority of the question will be asked in the IAM itself. And most of you, whoever are whoever get into the uh, uh, AWS as a cloud engineer or cloud or SysOp engineer, right? You will be allowed to work on to the even to this also. Like there might be a particular requirement where they will say that you should be very good in IAM, identity and access management. Have you worked on this IAM services? How much you have worked? So. Such kind of a requirement also will come into the uh, into your job requirement. So you need to be very good in all these things. And you could see that I have even added something introduction to the AWS resource access manager, inspectors and guard duty. These are some kind of a security related services which I'm going to uh, add into this model actually. Fifth model, sixth model, seventh model, eighth model and ninth model. Guys, this four models, one, two, three, four and five. Five models is totally pertaining to your AWS networking. Very important. This is also a very, uh, you can say, heart of your complete uh, you know, understanding of the cloud computing because this needs a lot of in, uh, knowledge in the networking part also because you will be uh, doing a lot of things uh, whenever you are accessing or whenever you want to set up the servers, right? Infrastructure set, set up everything. You need to even do infrastructure. You need to even uh, do a setup onto the networking side also. So for that, what are the different uh, you know, concepts uh, you need to know? What are the different services where your cloud provider? All the services, 
everything you should know related to the networking networking so you could see that i am will be covering a lot actually starting from the you know, vpc virtual private cloud how to deploy virtual private cloud right what is an architecture right and then like what is what is nothing but your routing security uh, groups internet gateways creating subnets what is vpc peering right real time use case of the aws vpc peering right what is an add gateway right and what are the endpoints very important understand the vpc endpoints right and then like what is a security groups what are nscls what is the difference between security groups and nscls this is very important this is one of the inter question which is always been asked actually what are the network policies what are firewalls actually and what is wafa service what is a dns firewall what is a vpc connectivity why we need a sorry vpn why we need a vpn connectivity all these things guys which we will be discussing actually in this five modules so this itself will take nearly around uh, i could say that nearly around 15 to 20 days classes 15 to 20 sessions only on this part only we are going to cover after that in the 10th module you could see that i'll be uh, explaining about the application network load balancer what are target groups right how to create a target groups what is the difference between target groups and load balancers right uh, performance issues on the load balancers right how you can increase the performance of the load balancing right all those stuffs we are going to discuss about this and very important is that your route 53 actually route 53 is a service which is same as your dns service right what is aws certificate manager third party certificate or thought all these things guys we are going to discuss this is a very very important thing because even this section also a lot of time in interviews they are going to ask you questions on this and then like we will come up with kind of a scaling what is it is issue to auto scaling okay how what are iams am amis right okay how to automate it suppose you want to create your own image ami image then you have to use a packer actually packer is another tool where you can uh, build an image actually so i'll be discussing about the packer also this itself will take me around 5 to 6 session to only explain you about the packers right so all these things guys which we are going to discuss in this model and very important the next model is aws system in managers right uh, suppose you want to do some kind of patching activity right in your organization uh, like uh, a uh, lot of time like you will be doing some kind of a security patching network patching os patching right then how does the aws it will provide all, provide you for going with the patching so you have to use some kind of a services we say right those services will be discussing and the certain model is a very important this is particularly for your database actually so suppose like you need to have a database in your aws cloud okay what kind of a services are provided within your aws cloud so you can create any kind of a database in your uh, database in your uh, aws cloud like you have a mysql database reddit as a redis database right then uh, adora database right any kind of a dynamo database database so all those things we are going to cover and very important is the elastic cache this is also very much important uh, many times it has been asked in interview so i'll be discussing about all these things guys in the 14th more uh, very important whenever you want to do some kind of a monitoring you have a lot of monitoring services like you have a cloud watch dashboards alarms right how to schedule with using with the help of a lambda function what is this lambda we'll be discussing all those things okay and very important here is that actually i'll be explaining about the cloud formations uh, templating what is a cloud formation means it is it acts like a infrastructure as a code so whenever you want to do any kind of an automation okay infrastructure automation you can use the aws cloud formation service by using this you can create automatically you can create a infrastructures actually you can create a servers actually this is same thing like a, a what you have a terraform but uh, but cloud formation it's pertaining to the aws cloud only so we will be strictly uh, concentrated more on the cloud formation not on to the terraform but we will discuss about the difference between terraform and cloud formation which is better and what is the advantage of using cloud formation or what is an advantage of using a terraform all those things we will be discussing about all uh, thing in our in our session so we have some the cloud trial aws config license manager service catalog so all these things we will be discussing under this 14th model 15th is about 15th module is all about the aws certificate manager using a third party software uh, third party certificates right we can install the certificates creating a, a route 53 domains right so cloud front right all those things we will be covering into the 15th module in the 16th module we will be concentrating more on to your containerizations right Container. Suppose you want to create a container, right? So you know that Docker is one of the 
uh, container management system, right? Software through which uh, you can create a containers. Similarly, in AWS, do you have any service we call it the ECR service? ECS service. These are the services which is provided by your AWS cloud with which you can create a containers. So this we are going to cover in a very in detail because here what happened, right? We have to cover about the ECS and ECI service as well as we have to even cover about the EK services. So EK service is nothing but your elastic Kubernetes service. So this is the Kubernetes services solution provided by your AWS cloud only. Right. So whenever the customers, they want to get into or they are developing some kind of a microservices and they want to deploy into the cloud. So while deploying cloud, they need a Kubernetes cluster. Right. So for that, the AWS itself will provide these services. So using these services, you can you can actually deploy all your microservices applications. So these are this is a very important uh, model, guys, because in interview also, a lot of time they were going to ask you, have you set up the EKS cluster in your in your environment, how do you set up? How do you install it? Have you configured it? What is ECR? What is ECS? What is uh, AWS EKS cluster? They're going to ask you some questions here in this also. So you have to be, you should have a theoretical and practical, both knowledge you should have whenever you are, you have been asked any question because here mostly a lot of uh, like, uh, uh, not like conceptual question, a lot of uh, practical questions, related questions will be asked here in this actually. Right, so you need to explain it. And here also, and you could see that deploying application using Fargate services. So we have a lot of other services which are very important. Like we have Fargate services, we have something known as a um, uh, Elastic Beanstack services. <clears throat> like all the services we will be discussing, guys. Actually, and the seventh model, very important is that actually the migration. So whenever you want to migrate some kind of some kind of an application which are running in on premises like for example in the on premises you are having some application server where uh, application server means you have some uh, application which is running into some tomcat server application server you want to migrate that application or else you have a database like where you have oracle database running in on prem you want to migrate the oracle database the whole entire database service you need to run you need to migrate from your on prem to the cloud right what, what is the service you lose or how you're going to migrate? All those things we'll be discussing here in this section. This is also very important. Sometimes they might ask you, not sometimes, many times they'll ask you whether you are involved in doing some migration activity, whether you're involved in doing a VM migration, virtual mission migration or server migration, database migration. These are the two important questions which will be asked every time. So obviously, uh, it is very important that when you are coming up with your resume and you say that you have worked on the cloud uh, AWS cloud or, or even in Azure cloud, you should, it is always important that in your resume, you put at least one project case related to the migration activity, which is very important because nowadays the complete uh, work which is going on in all industries is a migration activity only. So if you put uh, one or two projects, at least minimum one project, if you put and you say that you are involved in doing all this migration activity, this is what the step you followed it to do the migration activity. And uh, like, if you're able to explain all those things, right? then uh, there is a high chance that you will get, you know, you will get recruited because they need a people who were involved in doing a lot of migration activity. Okay. So in this also, guys, I'll be explaining about a lot of services related to that. Like, for example, you have a AWS service migration service, right? We have something like a database uh, migration service, DMS, we say, right? So we'll take an example also. Like, suppose I have a MySQL database in my on-prem, right? How I'll migrate the entire database, MySQL uh, server, uh, MySQL database service, which is running in my on-prem to the uh, to the cloud. All those things we are going to do practically. We are going to show you. Okay, and the 18th model is nothing but the developer tools model, where we will be doing uh, a lot of things on uh, doing uh, on achieving a complete CI/CD pipeline. So whenever you want to achieve the complete CI/CD pipeline within your cloud itself, right? Then you need to use some kind of a AWS developer tool services. Like for example, you have a code commit, code build, code deploy. These are the service, some of the few services which you provide by AWS Cloud. By using this, actually, you can you can achieve the complete CI CD pipeline. So very important because most of the companies, right, they have adapted this complete CI CD pipelining within the AWS Cloud itself. It means that you need not to have a separate service. You need to have a Jenkins service. You need not to install some Docker or you need to have uh, Git or anything, right, for achieving the complete CI CD. Instead, you can use an AWS service to achieve all the things. So these services are all paid service, guys. These are migrations uh, activity or even AKS, EKS. All these are paid service. You need to provide, you need to pay the hourly basis. You need to pay the money for these services. And to be very specific, all these are little bit costly services, 
right? Because the charges are very high, right? When you're using these services. And the lighting mode is automation, like infrastructure as a code, the same thing, cloud formation. I will discussing about the cloud formations. So this itself will take some few hours of class case, maybe five, six sessions I'll be covering only on cloud formation. Very important. Sometime in some industries, they will ask you, uh, particularly they'll ask you about the cloud formation. So may maybe they might have a requirement in their company where, you know, like uh, the candidate should be very good in cloud formation because mm -hmm. they might be doing a lot of, uh, you know, infrastructure setup, everything in their, uh, in their project. So they need a candidate. So in that case, what happened? You might get a chance to even work into that level. So you should also learn even the cloud formation also. And some other <coughs> very important, other important services we have, you know, the AWS Lambda services, uh, introduction to the Boto3 libraries, you know, like integrating the Boto3 libraries with your Lambda, integrating your Boto3 library with your AWS services, how to do a lot of automation using a Boto3 library, right? So many other services also important service which will be working or which we, or which will be learning in this Model 20. And the last is nothing but we will be discussing about a lot of things. Theoretically, we will discuss about what could be the activity of uh, AWS admin and all. What kind of a, is a day to day activity, right? What will be performing, right? What are the best practices we need to follow when you are working on the cloud, right? And we need to even understand about the, uh, you know, like uh, how to prepare for uh, uh, your AWS interviews and all, right? What kind of a questions will be asked and everything, right? So such things and all we'll be discussing at the nth model. That's the last model. As well as, as I mentioned earlier, like we have to even cover up a lot of project execution also because without projects, right? Like uh, it is something like you will, uh, without projects uh, understanding or without project uh, hands-on, right? It is very difficult guys, because uh, when you're answering also, you'll be able to, you can able to quote uh, whenever you do some project, you'll be able to quote that, okay, in that particular project, I use this service, this service, this is how I configured everything. These are the, you know, like, uh, uh, pitfalls where we found it and how we came up with the, how we recovered from that, how we start debug that issue and give the fix like that. All those things we can discuss when you are, uh, you know, when you have been asked uh, whether you worked on the projects or not. So that is very important, guys. So as I mentioned that you need to work on different, different projects so that you should be able to understand comfortably all the services, major services, which are probably AWS Cloud. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to even explain to the end about the certification also, like uh, how to prepare certification. I have a AWS, uh, the complete dumps guys. So I'm going to share that dumps also so that you will be able to go to the entire dumps and understand how to crack the, your certifications. So regarding certification, what kind of a different certifications are provided? All those things we'll be discussing in our next session. So next session, as I said earlier, we will be continuing from here onwards. From here onwards, we'll be continuing our session. From here onwards, right? We'll be continuing. And in the next session, what we're going to start or what we're going to have. So next session, uh, so uh, that is uh, on uh, tomorrow. We'll be discussing. So what are going to, next topic? Uh, we'll continue from where we left today. Okay. And then I'll be discussing about the cloud computing models, sorry, cloud computing models, uh, cloud providers. What are the different cloud providers are there? Different cloud providers. Okay. And then we will discuss about like how to create AWS account, very important. Because, because whenever you want to use your AWS site, you need to have an account. So once you have an account, then you can log in using with your account. And then like you can start using on it, using the AWS services, right? What are the different plans provided by your AWS account? So what is the basic plan? What is the professional plans? So all those things we, are, we have to discuss with this uh, uh, when I'm creating an account after. And then like finally, uh, how to create uh, Linux server or Linux server or Linux VM and Windows VM. So this, I know that many of you already know about this, but still what happened, right? We will be seeing like how to create, a, after you create an account, right? We will log into our AWS account and then we will immediately create a Linux VM as well as even for the Windows VM also. So we'll create a Windows VM and we'll see how we can log into this Windows VM server. Similarly, I'll also create a Linux VM, any Linux flavor, 
Red Hat or Ubuntu or any flavor I'll use. And I will show how to create the Linux VM also. So these things will be a part of tomorrow's session, guys. And from the from this, from next session, right? After tomorrow's session, the day after tomorrow, right? We will land up with the first service, which is not but EC2. So we're going to start with this model two. Of course, I need to even discuss about the AWS regions, availability zone, and everything. So what I will do that before I start EC2 instance, right? About the EC2 services, right? I will start with this itself. And then we'll start with this EC2. So as I said, guys, most of these models, right? It will take uh, some ample number of sessions. It's not like that within one or two sessions I will complete it. Maybe some services will take around four to five sessions. If, for example, storage might take for around uh, six to eight sessions, it will take me to complete it. So you would see that I'll be covering a lot in each and every model. So we should have a patience. We should have a dedication. As well as you should, you should have interest to learn. So all these things are required, guys. So once we are slowly, uh, you know, come, you know, completing each and every services, right, to an ample, uh, uh, from the very basic to the advanced level, right, then you'll be able to understand everything very, uh, like, uh, in a very good manner or very in a very good manner, you'll be able to understand completely. So I need a, a dedication from you as well as I need a support from you to complete this course. Is it fine, guys? So what I will do that, I will stop it here. It's been more than two and a half hour now. So we'll stop it here and I will go to share this into the description itself. And then we'll see how we can proceed from tomorrow. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Sure, guys. So any other questions you have before we wind up? Okay, fine. If no questions, then we will stop the session. Hmm? Okay, let me stop the recording.